Listen, welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. We welcome you to our midday prayer period. On today, we thank God for another Thursday afternoon, November the 17th, 2022, a week from Thanksgiving. So we thank God for another opportunity that God has given us on today to come together via this telephone conference call line with our members, visitors, and friends from across this city, uh, this country. Uh, we thank you for taking the time out of your schedule on today. Uh, the noonday hour to come together and have what I call corporate prayer. Uh, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Listen, he is good. He is good and his mercy endureth forever. Thank you, Deacon McCoy, for your faithfulness and being available to share with us uh, the names of those on the sick and prayer list, those requesting special prayer. So we yield to you at this moment, Deacon McCoy, uh, to share with us the information that you have. Are you on the line, Deacon McCoy? Yes, sir, I'm here. Good, good afternoon, Reverend Tobias, members, visitors, and friends. Our special prayer request for November the 17th, 2022, reads as follows. Brother Malcolm Dodd and Sister Dodd and family, in the passing of her sister, the late Sister Ella Hamlin Chestnut of Augusta, Georgia, we're asking for a prayer for traveling grace as they leave out this Thursday morning. The services are Friday, November the 18th, 2022, at 11 a.m. at Sharon Missionary Baptist Church in Augusta, Georgia. Sister B.B. Burns and family in the passing of her husband, Brother Herbert Burns, Deacon James Todd Jr., he had outpatient surgery Monday, November the 14th, 2022, he is resting at home. Sister Veronica Mance and Sister Clara Jordan and family in the passing of their niece, Sister Arthurine Mason Levy. The funeral service will be this Saturday, November the 19th, 2022 in Kosciuszko, Mississippi. Sister Betty Palmer went to the emergency room at the University Hospital with the flu. Brother Michael Berry, Sister Kayada Berry, Miles and family, and Sister Tabitha uh, Berry. Evangelist Mother Rachel Mitchell, Brother R.T. Clerk and family, Sister Ruthie Davis, the mother of Dr. Hymethia Thompson, Sister Belinda Travis, Sister Fulton, Sister Fanny Momin, Sister Jackie Lewis, she is the niece of Deacon James Todd, and she resides in Atlanta. Brother Larry Stevenson, the brother of Sister Deborah Stevenson, he is in the Yazoo Rehabilitation Center. Sister Annie McClellan, the oldest sister of Sister Stevenson, she's resting at home and resides in West Covina, California. Sister Demetrius Powell, the daughter of Sister Christine Jackson, she is resting at home. Sister Linda Sutterway, Sister Ella Buford, Reverend Matthew Blackwell, Sister Laverne Chin, Sister Carolyn Miller, Sister Sonji Cooper, Sister Jeannie White, Brother Robert McNair. We're asking special prayer for Sister Mia Banks. She's the great niece of Sister Carolyn Fleming, and she's battling with the flu. Brother James Clay and his wife, Linda, Reverend Durr, she resides in Seattle, Washington. Missionary Dr. Bobby Parker and her two daughters, Sister Brianna Parker, Sister Desiree Day. As they battle cancer, they reside in Trinity, Texas. Sister Diane H. Johnson, the sister of Sister Carolyn Fleming and her husband, Brother Edward Johnson Sr. Brother Calvin McKnight Sr., the nephew of Sister Fleming, he has been transferred to the Natchez Meredith Hospital and showing slight improvement. Sister-in-laws of Sister Fleming, Sister Teresa Hargrave and Sister Doris Hargrave, we're asking special prayer for Deacon Vernell Fleming in the passing of his brother, Deacon Ernest Fleming. Arrangements are incomplete. Brother Bernard Thompson, the nephew of the late Deacon Eddie Thompson, he resides in Fort Worth, Texas. Let us continue to be prayerful for our bereaved, those hospitalized, those that are sick and shut in, the homeless, the city's water crisis, also the University of Virginia's campus shooting, and uh, other local crimes here in the city of Jackson. 
First Thessalonians, first chapter five, verse sixteen through eighteen. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Ceasing in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This concludes our special prayer request for this Thursday, November the seventeenth, twenty twenty two. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon uh, S. McCoy, for sharing that information with the body of Christ on today. Um, listen, uh, Bible class will be on Monday, uh, November the 21st. Uh, we are now in chapter 3, Exodus chapter 3. Uh, listen, I have been greatly blessed uh, with the book of Exodus. Uh, uh, up until chapter 3, we have been talking about some good, 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 good stuff and learning some great things. So uh, please, ma'am, uh, go ahead and continue to read chapter three. Uh, I also solicit your prayers this coming Sunday at 6 p.m. We will be the uh, guest speaker uh, for the Madison County Baptist Association of Churches. I believe that's the organization, Madison County Baptist Association of Churches. They will be having their annual banquet this coming Sunday, uh, November the 20th at 6 p.m. Uh, the banquet will be held at Priestley Chapel uh, Church Multipurpose Complex there in Canton, Mississippi. Uh, we have been given uh, one table for the banquet, and we have some of our deacons and trustees who are going to come and support that event. So we solicit your prayers uh, uh, as we uh, bring forth the Word of God for the Madison County Baptist Association of Churches this coming Sunday at 6 p.m. Uh, Reverend Otis Davis is the moderator of the Madison County Baptist Association of Churches. All right, for our brief devotional thought on today, the Word of God has led us to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning with verse 6 through 9, uh, this is what the Word of God says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Then he concludes in verse 9 by saying, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Unwavering faith in trials. That's what our brief devotional topic or thought centers around this Thursday afternoon, unwavering faith in trials. Now, the truth of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, real quick, we all go through troubling times. Every individual on this line, we all go through troubling times, and it's easy to get disheartened when that happens. But, but this is what I love. The Bible teaches us that even during periods of challenge, adversity, we can respond correctly. So this passage of scripture that I read to you a few moments ago, this passage tells us to do what? It tells us to rejoice. Now, this does not mean that we are to be glad about the hardships, but, but this, we should rejoice because we are protected by God for the eternal glory that awaits us in heaven. Now, let me give you another reason. Another reason for joy is that trials are designed to produce endurance and spiritual maturity in us. That's what trials uh, are designated for, to produce endurance and maturity in us. You'll see that in James chapter 1, because God wants us to hang in there so we can derive the full benefit of whatever lesson he has in mind. God also, this is going to bless you, God also uses trials to prove to his children, to prove to us that their faith is genuine. 
Lord have mercy, Jesus. God uses our trials to prove to us that our faith is genuine. You'll see that in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 7. So when we preserve or when we persevere through each difficulty, through each trial and tribulation, our faith is tested, our faith is refined, and it reassures us of our salvation. Now, in closing, or in conclusion on today, as we learn that God brings benefit from our adversities, we learn that we will begin to face challenging times with confidence, knowing that he always has our best interest in mind. So this leads to joy because we know that God is building our endurance, purifying our hearts, and making us people with unshakable trust in him. We must have that unwavering, unshakable faith, knowing that God is going to turn our situation around, even in our trials. Hopefully and prayerfully, that word bless you on today out of 1 Peter chapter 1. Listen, we have three of our faithful deacons who are going to bless us today. They're going to pray with and for the body of Christ. Uh, we have Deacon Willie Bell Scott, we have Deacon Jared Spiva, and we have Deacon Burnell Fleming. Thank you all so much for agreeing to pray with and for us on today. Deacon Willie Bell Scott, if you're on the line, we turn it over to you at this time to lead us in prayer. Deacon Scott, are you there? I am here, Pastor. Thank you. May we go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come before your throne of mercy and grace to say thank you. Thank you for the many blessings you bestowed upon us. Lord, you woke us up this morning enclosed in our right mind, and we are eternally grateful. We thank you, Lord, for food that we prepared for the nourishment of our bodies. We thank you for a roof over our heads. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you promised to do for us. You've already done that, and we are eternally grateful. We thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who came here, suffered, bled, and died. But early Sunday morning, he rose with all power in his hand, letting us know that we have a right to come to heaven, to be with you, Lord. And we are so grateful. We thank you, Lord, for everything that has happened in our lives, our trials, our tribulations. They make us strong, and we know it. We know we have to go through them, but we're asking you to just stand beside us, to lead us and guide us in the path of righteousness so that we can Endure hardness as good soldiers. Lord, you're just so grateful. We're just so grateful for all that you've done. Lord, we're having a, this, these wars, rumors of wars. Children are losing their lives. But Lord, you we know that you are in the midst of all of this. And you will help us get through this. We ask that you bless our church. Our board of members, bless our pastor and his family, and thank you for his leadership. Thank you for his continued uh, service to the body of Christ. And we ask that you bless all the names that were called, uh, those that are sick, those that are shut in, those that are bereaved those who are downcast. We need you, God. We don't know anybody else who can do what you do. You can take care of us and help us to be what you would have us to be. We humble ourselves to you because we know that in giving ourselves to you, you can use us to help others. We bless your name, God, for all that you're doing right now for all that you have done and for what you're going to do. 
take care of us. Lead us and guide us. Those that are sick in the hospitals, take care of them, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Thank you, Deacon Scott, for getting us started on today. Deacon Jarrett's father, if you're on the line, we turn it over to you at this time. Deacon Jarrett's father, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. All right. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done for us. You are a mighty God, and we praise you for your awesome words. Lord, just control our minds that we'll be able to understand that you are our guide and our shepherd. Lord, we just give you the praise and the honor. Give us the strength, knowledge, and wisdom to understand that it's not about ourselves, but it's about you. We thank you for our pastor, Reverend Tobias, and his family. Continue to show him the way and encourage him as he continues to bless New My Zion with his outstanding leadership. Lord, continue to bless the New My Zion church family as we grow, worship, learn, and fellowship together. We offer a, sp- a special prayer on the city of Jackson. Let, let our leadership make the right decision. We pray that the senseless killings just stop. We pray for our young people that they'll be able to love, respect, and protect one another and draw closer to you. Let them do your will. We thank you for what you will do for us and what you have done for us. We thank you for your abundant blessing. I thank you for my family, my friends, and my loved ones. Lord, just bless the sick and shut in. Heal them and continue to watch over them. We pray for the homeless and those struggling financially and mentally. I'm extremely grateful for your wondrous works. We all should be grateful. Lord, just move any mountain that is in our way. We know that without you, nothing could be. We are blessed beyond measure. So let us not take that for granted. You are worthy of all the praise. Lord, bless everyone that is on this prayer call line. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you as well, Deacon Jared Spiro, for blessing us as well. Uh, Deacon Vernon L. Fleming, if you're on the line, we turn it over to you at this time. Deacon Fleming, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. Good afternoon to all who are listening. My God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I come before your throne of mercy, my God. Thank you, God, for giving me this one more time to plead for your grace and mercy upon all of our lives. Thank you, Father, for our pastor, who is the leader of our church, and the one who teaches us about the goodness of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, we realize it's not because of our perfection living, but it's because of your love and mercy you have for us all. Now, God, thank you for waking me up this morning, God. Thank you, Father, for giving us the the limbs of our body to carry on our daily life. We know, Father, that so many have laid down last night. I didn't wake up this morning. I could not use the dead body part this morning. But your grace and mercy have brought us thus far. And we thank you for it. Let us, oh God, be, be conscious of the fact that every day is a day of thanksgiving because no, no day is promised to us. Oh my, I pray for the sick. And the shedding. I pray for the one who may be confused in, the, in their mind. God, we pray for forgiveness, love, and peace amongst our brothers and sisters in this city, state, and country. Oh, God, protect us from our from seen and unseen danger as we go about our daily life. My God, be our rod, sword, and cheer when our enemies come against us. Oh, God, you are our God and light. Heavenly Father, guide the hands of the doctors and the nurses in the hospital and the nursing home. Mighty God, you are our source of our health and our healing. And you, there, there is calm, peace, and trust. God, God, grant us, Father, awareness of your presence and give us all the confidence that you in you because we should always know you care for us. In our pain, 
weariness, and anxiety, God. Teach us to yield ourselves to your never-failing care, knowing that your love and power surround us all. And Lord, I thank you for it. I thank you once more and again for my brother, Heavenly Father, we'll pass on. But God, I know Heavenly Father that he was a he was a soldier for the cross. And not only him, but Heavenly Father, but I thank you for the one who know your name. And I thank you for Heavenly Father that know that that, that, that you come or us a home somewhere. And God, and then we, we just must believe and trust in your holy name. That one day, one day, Heavenly Father, we will see your face. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you as well, Deacon Fleming, for uh, your faithfulness. Well, as we continue in prayer, God, our Father, we bless your name, God, and we thank you for all of your many benefits and blessings. God, we realize and recognize that the first step of all spiritual healing and spiritual blessing is to believe, God. And, and right now we come to you today, God, confessing that we believe in your power we believe in your word. We believe in who you are, God. We believe that you can do all things but fail. So now, God, we pray that you will continue to open our mind and our heart, believing in your infinite power and possibility to do all things. We believe, God, that healing is, is who you are, a dynamic and reachable experience that we all can experience. God, we believe that healing is a reality that can be experienced right now. Whether it be physical healing, spiritual healing, God, we know that it's a reality that we can experience right now. And God, because of that, I pray that we will continue to maintain a patient and loving spirit, patient and loving attitude, God, for, for we believe that your healing uh, activity is now at work in our minds, in our bodies, in our lives, even as we pray and speak to you right now. God, we believe that you are at work and that you are moving even right now. God, we, we look forward with joyful expectation uh, to the perfect holiness that you are now bringing in manifestation to our bodies. We look forward, God, to the joyful experiences that we will continue to experience during these, these holiday season as we prepare for Thanksgiving or next week. God, we believe in your constant expression of perfect good because we know that you are a perfect God and in, in, in that you are working with and through us. We rest, God, in the certainty and the assurance of your healing power because you heard all the names that were called uh, on the sick and prayer List today, God, there are so many who are in need of your healing power right now. And we know that with you, all things are possible. God, we thank you for, 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 for the trials that we experience, uh, not because we enjoy them, but because we know that there are, there are lessons that you want us to learn from everything that we go through. And God, I pray in the name of Jesus that whatever individuals are going through right now, that you allow their faith to be unwavering, their faith to be unshakable, and that their faith becomes unmovable, knowing that we should always abound in your word. Thank you, God, for that unwavering faith, because we know that the trials of our faith being much more precious than of gold that perish. And now, God, we pray for each individual, again, who's on this prayer call today, I pray, God, that you'll bless their families in a major way, God. I pray that you would continue to lift us up, build us up where we are towing down, God. This is a difficult season for some people because as we enter holiday seasons, they become sad and depressed because loved ones are no longer here with them. So I pray for them as well, God, that you would comfort us like never before. Even those who have lost loved ones, the death angel has been moving, God. So many of our members have lost loved ones. We pray for them as they prepare for uh, uh, various services and arrangements that they need to uh, put together. God, I pray with them, pray for them that uh, they are led by your Holy Spirit. And I ask God that, that, that you allow your will to be done in their lives and, and in all of our lives on earth, much like it is in heaven. God, we thank you for our great church family, how you have 
continue to build us up. We do not take that lightly. We do not take it for granted because we know, God, everything starts and stops with you. Now, God, I continue to ask that you allow your spirit to move afresh in this place. And I worship experience in my life and all of our lives so that others can look at us and not see us for who we are, but to see you living on the inside. This is my prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and thank God. Listen, we bless the Lord again for you who have taken the time to call and participate uh, in our midday prayer. I pray that you have a great rest of the day, and we anticipate uh, seeing your smiling faces this Sunday in our worship experience, but prior to that, we invite each of you to call and participate in our Sunday school hour, 9 a.m. Listen, until Sunday morning, may the grace of God be with you. Continue to be safe and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. Have a great day. Bye-bye.